The German immigration to the Elgin area began as early as 1836, when there were little more than a few log cabins in which the first settlers were living. In the following years, large colonies of Germans were coming to the United States and making homes for themselves and their families on farmlands in the vicinity. Before long, they passed the Irish to become Elgin's largest foreign-born group. The German people, like so many other immigrants from Europe, were drawn to the freedom of America and jobs in Elgin. Later expansion in the dairy and watch industries made Elgin an agreeable destination for Germans, Scandinavians, and Eastern Europeans. Population boomed from 5,550 in 1870 to 25,000 in 1910. Many new families came from the little kingdom of Hanover in Germany and encouraged relatives and friends to join them. There were enough settlers in the area to name the land east of Elgin, Hanover Township, now the Stringwood and Bartlett area. By 1900, 22% of Elgin's population was foreign born, but most were German born. An old history of Kane County describes these Germans as industrious in all kinds of business and wise in making their income always larger than their spending. At the height of this German immigration period, whole towns and neighborhoods of Germans were settled, such as East Dundee and Dutch Flats in Elgin. Dutch Flats was the name given to land west of South State Street between South and Orange Streets. The former Oak Street School, now Lowry School, was often referred to as the Dutch Flats School. The new life in Elgin and becoming American was difficult. Language barriers created challenges to school and social situations, but several German language newspapers, various German-speaking organizations, German churches, and German schools supported the growing community. The first German generation also formed German-speaking associations, such as the Concordia Society for Music and Dancing, the Turnverian Gymnasts, the Wahala Singers, and various fraternal groups. The Elgin Turner Association furnished an active social life for German immigrants. The association was organized in Elgin in 1883. In the early days, there were several different meeting places. It was not until 1924 that the Turners bought what had been the St. Mary's Academy building at 112 Villa Street. By the last decade of the 19th century, life in Elgin had a distinctly German flavor. The mayor, the fire chief, and president of the public library board were natives of the old country. Germans were the leading building contractors. The city's largest butter factory and butter tub plant were owned by Germans, and Germans were the largest single group of foreign-born workers at the Elgin National Watch Company. Germans dominated the scar-making shops and ran more saloons than the Irish. The Elgin Eagle Brewing Company was founded by German immigrants. Caspar Althian and Joseph Freiler maintained a distillery distributorship in Elgin. One of the early settlers of the area was William Grody. He was the son of peasants and left the village of Winsler in Hanover for America in 1866. He found employment as a farmhand in the Bartlett area. A year later, his parents joined him and together they purchased a farm. In 1881, he moved to Elgin and started a mercantile business with another German immigrant, Mr. J. Fred Etner. He later entered the real estate business, he attracted many industries to Elgin, and became the city's first German-born mayor in 1891. The Ackermans were lifelong friends of the Grody family in Winsler, Hanover. It was no accident that when William D. Ackerman came to America, he settled in Elgin and found employment in a dry goods store. August Ackerman came in 1875 and Conrad Ackerman in 1880, both finding employment in Elgin stores. William Ackerman established his own dry goods store in 1881. He was joined by Conrad and then August. Fred Ackerman arrived in 1887. He got his start in his brother's store, but later went to work for William Grody, who was now in the real estate business. 
Henry Ackerman came in 1891 and two years later formed a furniture and undertaking business with brothers Fred and Conrad. The firm was merged with Williams in 1895 to form Ackerman Brothers, which became Elgin's largest store. Another native of Winsler, William T. Boltman, married to Ackerman's sister Lena, joined the firm with a line of musical instruments. Later, in 1903, Grody, Fred Ackerman, and William Boltman assumed control of the Seabolt Reed Pipe Organ Company. Mike Elf wrote about three popular enterprises in Elgin. These were family-owned businesses, Blooms, Schicklers, and Mutertes, each founded by a German immigrant before the turn of the century. Louis Bloom arrived in 1888 and went to work at the Schramm's Ice Cream Parlor and Confectionery. He purchased the business in 1896 and only sold vanilla ice cream. Thirty years later, he was producing 12 flavors. Before refrigeration, ice cream was made in a hand-turned freezer. In late October, ice cream production would be discontinued until spring, except for the Christmas season. Production of confections would continue as these were very popular. The candy kitchens were located on the second floor above the ice cream parlor at 15 Douglas. The business would turn into a restaurant in the winter months. For parties and special occasions, the ice cream was hand-packed into molds of various shapes, such as flowers, baseball bats, witches, ears of corn, and even bowling pins. Customers could drop in to enjoy a Borden's Egg Malted Milk, a Pineapple Melba, an Orange Julep, or a Tutti Frutti Sandwich. Blooms was a community institution for two generations. Eddie Bloom, the founder's son, discontinued the business in 1964. Phil Schickler was a proprietor of a cigar factory and tobacco shop in Aurora. He sent his son Carl to Elgin to open a branch in the 1880s. Another son, Phil Schickler Jr., took over the store in 1891 and became an Elgin resident. Over the years, the store was known as the Poplar Cigar Store, Schickler & Son, and the House Schickler. The shop was the last of several cigar stores that once dotted the downtown area. The Elgin shop in 1953 inherited from the Aurora store a hollow pewter Indian princess weighing more than 200 pounds and standing 5 feet 4 inches. The store at 162 East Chicago Street featured blown up photographs of early Elgin which decorated the walls. In 1957, Herb Stettner, a longtime employee, bought the business from Schickler's grandson. When Herb retired in 1971, the business was continued by a son-in-law and daughter until a fall off in foot traffic resulted in the store's closing in 1977. Herman Mutertes came to Elgin from the old country in 1882. For a time, he drove a horse-drawn bus, worked in a grocery, and then found a job as a baker. He became his employer's partner in 1890 and became sole proprietor a few years later. The business became known as the Sunlight Bakery and evolved into a family enterprise that served Elgin for more than 80 years. The bakery survived a fire in 1913 that gutted the interior of the premises at 209 East Chicago Street. In 1928, the business moved next door into 205 Chicago Street. They had more than 20 employees and operated a fleet of nine panel trucks that delivered to homes and small retail businesses. If you wanted a delivery, all you had to do was display a card with the letter M on it in your window. After Leonard Mutertes passed away in 1972, his widow and their son were faced with rising costs and closed the business the following year. Other prominent German immigrants were Fred Fehrman, a merchant, was elected as alderman in 1875. One of his sons, Albert, became mayor, and another son, Emil, served as supervisor of Elgin Township. Carl Parlaska, director of Elgin's famed Song of Hiawatha pageant, was the son of a Hanoverian who was one of the city's first mail carriers. Henry Bierman, along with fellow Hanoverian William C. Heiderman, were joint owners of one of the city's river mills in 1857. Bierman later became the first German-born resident to be elected to the Elgin City Council.
Fred W. Seeger, a major building contractor, erected several public buildings and factories. C. H. Geister was a local manufacturer of agricultural implements. William H. Hines was president and principal owner of the Elgin Butter Company. August Sheely established Elgin's largest food store, the supermarket of its day. His business set the standard for quality and cleanliness. Joseph Hecker was the director of the famed Elgin National Watch Factory Military Band. He was born in Germany in 1845. He began the study of music at age five, began arranging music at age eight, played the first violin in a symphony orchestra at 10, and was directing that orchestra at age 15. August Nolting was the leader in the butter and cheese business in Elgin, Northern Illinois, and in Wisconsin. His business expanded to include over 20 creameries in South Dakota. His contribution to Elgin was the Nolting block on South Grove, which was replaced by a J.C. Penney store in the 1930s. Upon William Godey's passing, Nolting took the leadership role in the operation of Godey's real estate business. Nolting also served as personal secretary to Crody's business associate, Alfred Church, who was Mrs. Gail Borden's son from a previous marriage. The large five-story building on Grove Avenue, the Barrett Building, was named after Peter J. Barrett, the son of Benjamin Barrett, one of the city's founders. Peter Barrett owned a farm in Hanover Township. He also invested in the Elgin National Watch Company, as well as the Home National Bank and other businesses in the city. An interesting note about Benjamin is that his grave marker is actually in the shape of a log cabin with the number 1837 above the door. This is the year Benjamin came to Elgin. He is buried at Bluff City. The earliest German churches, the German Evangelical Church and St. John's Lutheran Church, were established in the 1850s. St. Paul's Evangelical, now the Vineyard, was established in 1875. The first Evangelical Church, founded in 1893, later became known as Faith Methodist Church. The founding of St. Joseph's Church in 1887 was a result of an increased number of German Catholics who wanted a pair separate from the Irish who were dominant at St. Mary's. St. Joseph's, St. John's, and St. Paul's also provided parochial schools that combined instruction in German and in English. Conversely, Holy Trinity Lutheran Church, founded in 1903, was a result of English-speaking Lutherans who wanted a parish separate from the Germans who were dominant at St. John's. The German people were very important to the development of Elgin. Many Elgin households of the late 1800s and early 1900 could trace their ancestry to the village of Winsler in Hanover. The sons and daughters of Winsler contributed their talents to the growth of an American city.